Tell him to lay off, all right? You keep saying that, only he's getting worse. Well, it's this, it's, it's this thing he's working on. Sunstroke, Mrs. Agostini. Mrs. 
Mr. Casillico, you're behind with some system payments. We'll have to take court action. <laughs> Hey, can you help a fellow out? Fifteen cents for the subway. Mr. Shilato, as of today, you're four weeks behind with subsistence payments. Three hundred dollars. Don't on me. Unless you pay up, the former Mr. Shilato will have to take court action, cents. and you know what'll happen if she does. Fifteen cents for the subway. And if they hadn't raised the fare, you'd be settling for a nickel. Now what foul typhoon blows from the crypt to this? Mr. Shilato, please. Think. Use your imagination. You've got to get to, uh, Baltimore. Mr. Shilato, and, please. Uh, the fare is Listen ten bucks. Listen to me, please. Will you let me have ten bucks to go to Baltimore? Mr. Shilato, I mean it. You don't want to go to jail again. It could be three months this time. If you don't pay the arrears by tonight, I'll serve you with a decree that establishes Mr. Shilato's alimony by tonight or else. Oh, get away, Norton. would you? prison make. And do they make a prison? I beg your pardon? The hell they don't. Uh, this is where they make them. We don't make them here. We're Ethans. Ethans? Yes, Ethans. E-E-F-I-N-S. Electronic equipment for interplanetary navigational systems. It's used in the RK-402. You mean that this is going to conquer all that? Of course. That's our universe. Watch your step, pouty mouth. Stars are fragile stuff. Yes. These are Mr. Cussman's estimates of the ZY101 4678 W. Thank you, Mr. Lookoff. Sure. factory turned you out? Radcliffe, Smith, Vassar? I don't know what you're talking about. I went to secretarial school. Really? Uh-huh. Everything's red. An atom sun, fuchsine sky, vermilion sun. 
merely different shades of red. But they tell you that it's a rainbow, so you won't know you're in hell. <laughs> Chenille. There's a tasty red. Made from the dried up bodies of female insects. <laughs> Why don't you volunteer yours? Why, Mr. Longfellow. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. I... <laughs> Do you have three hundred dollars? There doesn't seem to be anyone in there, but the doors are locked. It smells like smoke. Where's Miss Walnicky? Well, there was someone in cleaning Mr. Bingham's the key. Where's Miss Walnicky? I'll find her. Are you sure? 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 Are Excuse me. All right, everybody get back to work. Let's go back to you again. Boom. Santa, what foam? Rhoda, come and get your order. Listen, Samson, can't you apologize or something? Rhoda! Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's 300. Samson, I can't borrow any more money from him. Will you stop yelling? I gotta go. I'll do the best I can. All right, yeah, okay. Goodbye. Gotta call at noon? Well, he's been laid off. What did he do now? Nothing. It's the slow season for carpet cleaning. Yeah, yeah, sure. For what, Knocker? 75 bucks a week alimony for what? I don't even remember a name. Beverly. Yeah, Beverly. I'll tell you the secret of life, Knocker. Never marry a Beverly. Why did you? Why? Well, she said it was just a formality. Just a formality. Japan surrendered with less formality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, Knocker, you're my last hope. Now, this is the big one that's beginning to flow. But I need time. I need time and peace. Look, I can't write poetry in jail. I've tried it. I told you. Not another time. Knocker! Hey, Samson! Hi, Rhoda. Hi, Angie. Hey, Samson, Mr. Butter's got some great news for you. Hello, Samson. Mm. Mr. Butter, when was the operation? Uh, he don't mean anything. I mean everything. Samson! Won't you at least listen to what he's got to say? Well, tell him what you told me. Well, I've arranged a cultural luncheon for the Women's League at the Seven Arts for tomorrow afternoon at Picasso Hall. Yeah, this guy playing the harp. And uh, Endicott Brown reading his poetry. That's it. Endicott's come down with laryngitis. Oh, poor dear. No, no, no. You can take his place and then you read your poetry. Idiot! You want me to read to housewives and mothers? These are very intelligent women. Then you read to them. You've got a nice soprano voice. All right. But I thought you could use the $200. Two hundred bucks, Samson. You only got to recite for twenty minutes. Nothing doing. Go it to your work, Shillitoe. Your one book didn't reach too many people. How many copies did it sell? 
128. Deserve better. I'm not a performer. Samson, 200 bucks, that's 10 bucks a minute. I don't perform. I better have Lalage Davenport read her poems. No, women don't like to listen to another woman. Uh, sure don't. You'll be all right. You'll see. They'll love him. All right. Noon tomorrow, then. Sharp. Rhoda, put on the fight! Yeah, all right. Don't worry, Rhoda. He'll get another job. Yeah. He's very unusual. No, I do understand. You cannot discuss case histories yes, well, that way. No, no, doctor, in your opinion. It's not scientific. Sir, in, in your opinion, what? can analysis really help the artist, the man of genius? Well, yes, it depends on the artist. It depends on the analyst, of course. Well, let's take the classic example, the writer who's dried up. The blocked writer? Yes. Oh, yes, I've had great success with that problem. Great success. Rhoda! The you, fight! Now you're concerned. No, they, All they, right, they, already! Well, oh, no. Oh, yes, well... No, I, well, I, as I said, the person of genius is my special interest. Oh, yes. See, well, he's an extreme from so-called normality, well, in the same way that, uh, well, um, a man of evil is. See, these are the edges of the Rhoda. human spectrum, mm -hmm. so to speak. The one thing I find uh, to criticize in my profession is that more and more psychiatrists are dealing only with the, uh, the middle of this spectrum. See, they are confining themselves to those fundamentals of behavioral analyses which are no longer challenging. This is a dangerous sign. Oh, doctor, dangerous for who? The psychiatrist or the patient? No, no, I mean, from, from our point of view, from the psychiatrist. You see, for our work now, in the present and the foreseeable future, it, it really must be largely intuitive. Doctor, you mean largely guesswork. No, seriously, Dave. <laughs> Dave, listen, no. Now, see, from there, it, it isn't very far to becoming pill and serum dispensers. <laughs> now, you see, I think that psychiatrists must move farther and farther towards the ends of the spectrum. Yes, but just a moment, Doctor. In a democracy like ours, shouldn't we be more concerned with the Morning, middle Ella. of the spectrum? Ronnie? Uh, I think I'll just have uh, orange juice for my coffee. Does. He will eventually tackle the two areas about which we still know next to nothing. The area Start of down a hunger the strike. Area of evil. Mm, is that so? But after all, Suppose Doctor, we could always we feed him intravenously. In middle of the spectrum folk. Uh, did you read my speech for tonight? I'm talking about the extremes. That's the important Not thing. Yet. We merely keep a neat little file of cerebral symptoms, motor symptoms, sensory symptoms, visceral symptoms, etc., etc. Where do we go from there? What symptoms? The next step will be uh, hang symptoms. In our offices showing the symptoms. I'm uh, going to be out of town Friday. Brown and the oral what symptoms? Well, a symptom, well, a symptom is something that daddy... Don't give in to her. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. You eat your breakfast. I won't. And when he does... Will eventually tackle the two areas. Can't we have that thing off? No, no harm done. Mm. Look at right. this mess. It's, right. it's the school bus. Relax, please. They are coming right now. The school bus. Mrs. West. All right, I heard you take them downstairs. They are coming, they are coming. Daddy, flip me, flip me, flip me. Oh, 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 excuse me. Oh, it's Dr. Fullback. Dr. Vorbeck on the phone. <laughs> Dr. Vorbeck on the phone. Oh, tell him to come right up. He says to come right up. Thank you. Busy day today? No. I had a heart lesson this afternoon. No. Why not? Because I'm a lousy harpist. My teacher's giving a recital. I'm going to that. Well, that ought to be fun. Hysterical. All right, let's.
lessons out of them. I'm sick of harp lessons. I'm sick of modern dancing lessons and painting lessons, and I'm sick of the kids. I'm bored. You know, for a moment, you sounded like one of my patients. Maybe I should be. At least I'd see you once in a while. Darling, if there's anyone who doesn't need psychoanalysis, it's you. Thanks. I will talk, really talk, tonight. Your banquet's tonight. Oh, damn. And good morning, Doctor. Good morning. See you tonight. Hi. Thanks, Freddy. Lydia. Hello, Freddy. Mm, darling. Tense, darling, very tense. You think so? Oliver says I'm the one person in the world who doesn't need analysis. <laughs> Everybody needs psychoanalysis. You think the uh, inner recesses of my mind would be interesting? We'll be at my office tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, and we'll find out. Freddy, if I ever think she needs help, I'll see if she gets it. Now, come on, let's go. Seven Arts have a very special treat in store for us. Mr. Samson Shilito, poet. <laughs> Mr. Shilito has most graciously consented to read for us from his own book of poems, Hellebore. Hellebore, incidentally, is a medicinal herb which in ancient times was used to cure madness. I looked it up. <laughs> Mr. Samson Chilito. Thank you. 
Once upon a time, a boy wrote, Hail to thee, blithe spirit, and they kicked him out of school. And a man wrote, Here I am a poet that does drink of life as lesser men drink wine. Him they locked in a cage. Oh, and another man wrote, Put them all together and they spell mother. Him they gave respect, reverence, money, money, money. What's wrong with a poem to mothers? I happen to be a mother. Briar, briar, limber lock, 12 geese in a flock. The old ones ride the young ones' backs. And they can't get over the chimney stacks. What's that supposed to mean? They may stop passing the buck to babies. <laughs> but, Mr. Shillito. Yeah? Please, ladies, please. I, I do think we should let Mr. Shillito continue. Shall we proceed? Women. Women, have you had love? Hmm? How was it told? With the diamonds and brocade? Did he ever say he loved your moments of glad grace? Or did he ever say, oh, my love is like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June? Women, you are. Red, red roses, you are. And blossom. Unfold. Open your corsets and bloom. Let some metaphors creep above your knees. Oh, I don't think looks like that a bit. Now. I'll read to you. You! What do you think you're going? Sit down. Don't you walk out on me. Puerile, insolent, sniffy snob, culture-chasing vulture. Go look for blossoms in a hardware store. You're dying for lack of this. Go on to the gallows. Run to the gallows. How can you do this? What do you think I am? Shut up. Sit down. Ladies of the Moral Rectitude and Seven Sins Society, you tuberculin-tested hags, I oppose the fabulous immensity of your nothingness! Rhoda! She's doing what? Rhoda, get off the phone! I'll be right there. doing? Rhoda, where you going? Rhoda! Rhoda! All right for you! my poetry. You on my liver.
them out of here before I call the police. Samson, what happened? I didn't like my reading. Well, you're gonna pay for this damage. Uh, you can take it out of my 200 bucks. He doesn't expect to be paid for what he's done. What do you mean you promised him 200 bucks? I'll die first. Uh... They'll never let me be chairwoman of anything again. Now, let you invited him. But he didn't recite a single poem. Everything he says is a poem. Now, give me my 200 bucks. Don't give it to her. Oh, you, you, give, her. Me no, no, give, it. Don't give it to him. 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 Anymore. All right. All right. This is disgusting. And you're immoral to take it. He's finished. He can't write anymore. He can't even hold a job. Whatever talent he did have is gone. You go and drop that, and I mean right now, you think. Uh, <laughs> Here I meet my mockers, scorn for scorn. Samson, what happened? I tried to tell them, Rhoda. I really did. Why do I have to be a poet, Rhoda? Why a poet? Why not a saint? Why this everlasting song? Something's wrong somewhere. <laughs> the uh, patient to have her husband come in. It's possible that he has encouraged her infidelity, so I shall try to ascertain any lack of virility on his part. You can't come in here just any time. Lady, it's very important. I told you, you must be referred by your physician. And I told you I'm not the patient. Well, now, if you don't leave... Hey, I'm... hey, hey, listen. Hey, Dr. West? Yes? Oh, it, it's about Samson. You see, everybody's been telling me that he he needs help. You know, your kind of help. Well, now, young lady, in order to take on another patient, I'd have to give up one of my present cases. Oh, so? Well, that's impossible. But he's very important. Well, of course he is. Doctor, you're due at the Institute. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Uh, Miss Bueller. Uh, They're calling about the article again. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll finish that tonight. Now, Miss Bueller, make an appointment for Mr. Uh... Shillito. Samson Shillito. Samson Shillito. Yeah. I think maybe I'll try Dr. Huddleston. No, no, you don't stand. It's got to be him. Dr. West. Dr. West. Now, there's $200 there. How many treatments will that buy? No, no, you pay whoever the doctor is as you go along. Oh, no, I, I, I got to get rid of this today. Really? Oh, sure, if he finds out about it. Pow! Sorry. You see, uh, S uh, Samson always uh, says to me, me. Oh, wait a minute. Now, he doesn't really hit me. I mean, he just comes close. You must understand, I'm not complaining Excuse about me, it. Sorry, I... I'm late. I'll have to go. I saw you on television, and you said you could help writers. I have helped writers who wanted to be helped, but I never heard of a writer named Samson Shillitoe. Well, you should have. Now, now, listen, this is the Buffalo Courier Express with Hello Bore by Samson Shillitoe. A new voice is heard throughout the land. At last, we have a tendentious poet. Tendentious means he's got a cause. I know. Now, this one, this one in the Poetry Journal is a half a page long. Mr. Stilato seems determined to stand apart and to forge a new poetry. And since, since poetry is made from life, hey, what?
Wait a minute! Go what away, minute will you? Stop I've got I'm a meeting to go to. I'm not interested. You're... No, I don't take patients in the middle of Fifth Avenue. Now go away, will you? Oh, no. you got to listen to me. Even I'm the New York now. Times has been looking forward eagerly to his next book. Oh, lady. Not talking about some phony teaching at a girl's college. Samson is a dedicated man. He, he's a great poet. You heard what those reviews said, and, and they were only about a collection of small poems. You see, he's he's writing this big poem, and, and now it just won't come out. It's bigger than anything he's ever done. Almost five years he's been working on it, but now it, it, it just stopped. Like you said, he's blocked. Don't you understand? You know, when the poem is going right, He's in another world, and the words are just bouncing all over the place, and, and, and there's just nothing like it. You know, sometimes it can start in the middle of the night. I mean, it, it can start any time at all and in the craziest places. Don't you understand? It's tearing him apart, and there is nothing I can do because I don't know where his inspiration comes from. I mean... Wherever it comes from, it sure doesn't come from me. Now, look, Mr. Schultz, I couldn't possibly... Now, listen, I haven't cried since I was three years old. But I'm afraid he's going to do something dumb. I mean, a lot of writers kill themselves when they get like that. You've got to help him. Please, you've got to help him. All right, mix it up. Mix it up. Let's go. What did you want? Oh, oh. What? <laughs> what did I tell you? This guy can't really take that right hand and protect your chin and all that much as lower the world in the... He ain't here. Wanna look around? Just, uh, keep doing what you're doing. I hereby serve you this subpoena, and uh, Officer Quirk is my witness. Take it! Take it! Take it off! Oh, now you've done it, Shillitoe! That's all he's done! Suitcase on the Fitzgerald. Where are we going? It's none of your business. Well, it's my business if I'm going there, ain't it? Cobb City, Indiana. Okay. Why? Well, I got an uncle there. Come on, hurry up, hurry up! You can run away from here, but you can't run away from yourself. Now get the suitcase! Quick! Hey, how are we gonna get to Indiana? By bus! Now get parking and give him the 200 bucks! No. What? Well, I haven't got it. Give me that dough. Well, I can't. I gave it to Dr. West. You're pregnant. 
No, he's a, he's a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist? Oh, stop kidding around. I'm Give not it. kidding. You gave it to a psychiatrist? Why? Did somebody tell you psychiatrists can cure stupidity? Same thing. It's not for me. It's for you. For me? And hitting me is not going to get it back because I already paid for, for 20 visits in advance. You gave him my money? Sometimes, and it's only 10 bucks a visit. I mean, you know, usually he charges a lot it's more my money. than that. But he charges a lot more than that, but he's interested in your case. You see? My now, case? Yeah. Now, see, there's his card. It's 41A Park Avenue. You're supposed to be there at 3 o'clock on, on tomorrow. You decided that I need a psychiatrist. Well, you need help. You decided. You with a brain smaller than a pygmy's gene? You. Poem's taking shape. I need time, a place to work. And you get my money away. Samson, I did it for you! Oh. Oh. See what's happening!
Okay. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. I, uh, uh, I'll walk you to the elevator. You know what? Well, I've got to go to the office. Oh, no, Oliver. Oh, no, just for a little while. No, Oliver. Well, I'll be... That's three nights in a row. I'll be back in less than an hour. Not tonight, please. Oh, honey, now, look, you know I've got to finish dictating that article. You know how important it is. After tonight, it'll be done. Do it in the morning. I'm at the Institute in the morning. Oh, please. The deadline is tomorrow. It has to be tightened and delivered by noon. Nuts with the article. Let's go to bed. All right, get ready. I'll be there in 45 minutes. you doing? Dr. West? Who are you? Are you West? Yes. You owe me 200 bucks. Oh. Shillitoe. Samson Shillitoe? Right. 200 bucks. Now, I promised your wife that under no conditions would I give you the money. Now, you'll find me pretty good at karate. You would be. Come on, Wes, give me my dough. No. Absolutely not. You can't need the money that much. No, but I think you need me. You idiot. You really think so? Mr. Shillitoe, you appear to be much too intelligent to stoop to name calling, but if it helps you to relate to me, you can call me anything you like. Quack! All right, frankly, Shillitoe, I didn't want you as a patient. My schedule is overcrowded as it is. However, your wife told me certain things that made me change my mind. What things? Well, for one, that you've been unable to write. West, you stick to mending scratches of disappointment. One of the rules of a tragic time is that real enemies must never meet in open combat. Oh, but uh, I don't think we're enemies. No. You protect what is while I envision what can be. We're not enemies. That's nicely phrased. Nicely phrased? Oh, you sound just like a woman. Oh, you say things so beautifully, I could listen to you forever. And by forever, a woman means at the most 20 minutes. Oh, but you still get involved with them. No. They get involved with me. Because they know I'm capable of a beauty more real and lasting than theirs. The cunning little beasts can't stand it. And they interfere with your work. Oh, look! Give me my money and let me get out of here. Listen, Shil Shilato, listen. Do you have any idea how dull most of my patients are? But of course. Look at it from my point of view. Do you realize how rarely I get a case that's any reading challenge? Yeah. Knock this off. Thank you. I mean, what could psychiatry have done against the, the rages of Beethoven? Could I, have, could I have cured Edgar Allan Poe of drink or saved Van Gogh? I mean, what is this poetry that you sacrifice everything for? Why do you write it? Well, we can only get the answer from the artist himself. And here you are, perhaps a writer of great potential. Or maybe you're phony. Well, there's nothing I can do but take the time to find out. And after all, I've been paid in advance. Do not confuse the difficult with suffering. To be sad is easier than going mad. Look, West, I'm in a jam with the cops. I need my dough to get out of town, honest. You don't believe me, do you? No, I don't. We've come a long way toward ignorance and all uphill. Okay, well, what does that mean? That could put you out of business.
Schiller, so I've heard enough to know that you have a good mind. It's, it's alive, alert, inquisitive. Give me my money! Now, there's absolutely no reason for your despair. What despair? Your wife has told me about your mood. She's afraid you might kill yourself. What? Oh, women. Somewhere they got the idea that laughter means happiness. So from the moment you're born, they tickle your feet, chuck you under the chin, till you laugh yourself sick. The moment you stop, the moment you have one serious thought, you're on the brink of suicide. Do you mind if I borrow your book? No, help yourself. Thank you. Look, West, if you surrender to make me happy, give me my money. I'll go home. Either you give me back my door, or you start earning it right now. You know what time it is? sigh, like the caves of hell sighed, when the incestuous mother uttered the name death. The sound reverberated, farewell, and again and again, farewell, farewell. What does that mean? Where are you going? Good night. What do you mean, good night? If you can't interpret a simple dream, I want my money back. Good night. What am I supposed to go? Go home. I told you I can't. A cop's after me. Uh, what did you do? Well, I couldn't pay my alimony. Wesson, tonight, the third part of my poem began to take shape. I need a place to work. Let me stay here just until morning. Hmm? I'll, I'll dedicate it to you, to, to West. Dr. West. My secretary gets here at 9.30. I'll be gone by 9. Cleaned up, locked up, gone. And you'll be back for your appointment at 3 o'clock. Don't worry, I still want my 200 bucks. Uh, it's only 190 now. You just had your first session. And come on in and see what you did to me. Who the hell are you? I said, who the hell are you? I'm looking for Samson Shillito. Well, you're wasting your time because he never discusses his poetry. Where is he? How the hell should I know? Where is he? And if you don't get out of here in about two seconds, I'm going to start screaming, cop or no cop. You understand? One, two, three. Ah! Look out. Come. I'm going to report you to the precinct, you fascist thinking.
Maybe you'd all like to come in and watch. When it change your attitude, hmm? Keep quiet. Don't tell me to keep quiet. He's doing it to mock me. Your fancy doctor wants to see me, so I'm here. And our son and your wonderful mother are witnesses. as black as the ace of diamonds. Dr. West? He's not here. Uh, when's he expected? What time's your appointment? I don't have one yet. You don't have an appointment. You work with Dr. West? You one of his patients? In a way. What's wrong with you? Nothing. What's wrong with you? I am not a patient. Don't be smug. It could happen just like that. My wife, Evelyn, she's the patient. Yeah? My name's Tupperman. My name's Swinburne. Dr. West told my wife to ask me to stop in. Three, two, five. No, she wasn't married, just pregnant. Two, one, eight. No, let me see. The embezzler, the peeping Tom. Three, three, one. It was nice meeting you. Come here. What's that? I think it's your wife. My wife. Uh-uh, not until we're sure she's 331. How do I know what number she is? Huh? How many times she been here? Four. Mm-hmm. Suffers from mild hysteria. It ain't so mild. Mm, must be hard. Uh, file 3311, fourth visit. Today, the patient admitted that she had recently committed adultery. It was this act which caused her hysteria in her coming to me. Dana, take a little stroll so your mother and I can talk. Hmm? I'm tired. Dana, I said stroll. Evelyn, you're holding out on me. I have nothing to say, except to Dr. West. <laughs> Dr. West, suddenly he knows better than your own mother. I've asked the patient to have her husband come in. It's possible that he's encouraged her infidelity. So I shall try to ascertain any lack of virility on his part. Virility? Lack of virility? That's you. Lack of... Lack of virility? Lack... You're going to ascertain my virility? How's this for virility? How's this? Virility and virility? How's this? Take it easy. Uh, oh. uh, easy now. Oh, oh Evelyn. Oh, Evelyn. Everything she wanted, I gave her. A diamond wristwatch. A mink coat. Not a jacket, a full length. She wants a psychiatrist. So I let her have a psychiatrist. Did I ever complain about the $35 a visit? Only charges me 10. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. She's outside in the car. You tell her everything you heard, Swinburne. No, I don't want to get involved. 
Oh, please, please. I'll do you a favor someday. Look, I'm in real estate. You need an apartment? I need a room to walk in, but I gotta have it today. Done! Come on. We'll throw her mother out. You can have her room. Up with the Gisando, build more. Keep building. Let me see. Down one and build together. Together. That's it, build. All the way down one, back up again. Excuse me. Hello? Oh, uh, Dr. Longfellow, he isn't here. He said something about a meeting at the Institute. So often happens with chimpanzees upon reaching maturity, Jojo became savage. He killed two other chimps, an orangutan and a big baboon. So what do we do with Jojo? What do we do with such a dangerous creature? Do we isolate him forever? Do we kill him? No. There is another way of eliminating this catatonic state. So the zoo authorities gave me permission to use my method the Mencken transorbital prefrontal technique. The procedure is simple and exactly the same as I use on humans. I lift the eyelid and make the insertion through the conjunctival sac and orbital plate into the orbital surface of the frontal lobe to a depth of exactly four centimeters. I will not appreciably damage any of the cortex, but with an arc swing of the instrument, I cut the inferior quadrant of the lobe, passing just anterior. Thank you. Just anterior to the tip of the lateral ventricles. Of course, this uh, must be done to both major and minor lobes for the operation to be effective. But the beauty of this technique is that it can be done almost anywhere, even in the doctor's office. <laughs> Marvelous. <laughs> so I vote we let Dr. Mencken locatomize all the nasty chimpanzees we have as patients. I've never appreciated the Prussian sense of humor. <laughs> I'm not Prussian. I'm Viennese. Uh, Dr. Mencken, why have you insisted on showing us this? I thought it obvious, Doctor. You're the head of Para Park. Dr. Kropotkin is the resident director. The rest of us are members of the board. You want to use psychosurgery at Para Park? On violent cases, yes. But this is a creature from the jungle. If it had been raised in a healthy environment... Nonsense. As I've just told you, he was a destructive... What you have told us proves nothing. There are organic differences between the ape's brain and the human's. My technique has had the same success on humans. I've already done it more than 30 times. But in a well-organized, organic society... I thought we had progressed beyond lobotomies. This is not the old-style lobotomy. It's the Mencken technique. Anyway, you talk of progress. You've still got them on couches. I understand that. Why? How far have you progressed from your precious Sigmund? 
Dr. Freud. He wasn't Siegmund to me, and he isn't Siegmund to you. I demand an apology. Oh, come on. Are we supposed to be scientists or diplomats? and hats? All right, now, let's keep it scientific. Now, now, whether you call it lobotomy or lochotomy or the Mencken technique, the method is imprecise and always destroys brain tissue. The patients live in a lower emotional level, and the damage is irreparable. So what alternative do you offer? Love, <laughs> understanding their fathers. These were destructive people. And years of wallowing in self-pity while you held their hands isn't going to make them any less so. But if you give these people a congenial environment, then the stresses and strains of everyday life will not affect them. Let me go, let me go. <laughs> It's all right. All right. Uh, oh, it's okay. Let him go. Give me that money. Let him go. It's all right. West, my money. Uh, excuse me. I want to talk to you. Come here. Come here. West, I just might be able to get you into Para Park. Para Park. It's a private hospital. There's nothing you won't do to keep my money, is there? No, no, no. You'll be one of the special cases admitted free. Oh, yeah. Bargain day. Of course, you realize the police couldn't touch you as long as you're Para Park. Huh? Or maybe you prefer prison to a nice, quiet room where you can work. See, it depends on me getting my colleagues to go along. Dr. Vest comes out on Saturdays, and he'll want a session with you. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, you will have a group therapy. But remember, if there is anything that you should want to thresh out, I am available. Are you sure I have a private room? Oh, yes. And I'll be left alone to work? Of course. Good. Communicate with your muse. Don't worry, no one will disturb you. Did you call him today? Uh, yeah, he's, he's progressing nicely, thank you. They've been telling you that for two weeks. No, oh, they'll never cure him. Oh, shut up. They're doing miracles these days. Well, maybe you ought to go out and visit him. No, they said not yet. Well, just don't worry. These doctors know what they're doing. Yeah. Term. No, no, that's not so technical. I know what that means. In medical terminology, many things come under the heading of surgery, which you might not think so. Uh, the extraction of a tooth, for example. You call that surgery? Mm hmm So, if you'll just sign here, believe me, it's the right thing to do. No, I don't want to do anything that's going to hurt him. Of course not. Like I said, it's... Just like having a tooth out. Listen, I have one out right here, you see? Mrs. And it hurt out how? Uh, you'd like your husband home again as soon as possible, wouldn't you? Yeah, but I think I will talk to Dr. West about him because, uh, you know, he's the one who's taking care of him. <laughs> yes, but as I've explained, Dr. West is the head of Para Park Hospital. So even with your signature, no treatment can be given your husband unless Dr. West and his fellow specialists approve. We 
better people, and you must give them a better verb. Please, Sammy, don't work anymore today. Uh, I gotta work, Bill. Oh, but you should relax just a little. Yeah, I, I know. Dr. Kropotkin. Yes? Dr. Kropotkin. Dr. West is arriving. Thank you. Doctor. Arnold. Good afternoon, Mrs. West. Hello. Doc, doctor, could I talk to you for a minute? Yeah, come over here. Exactly what has he done? What ain't he done? Have you been bothering him? No. You know the group therapy meetings? Yeah. <laughs> well, they ain't meetings no more. They're lectures. And how about the new ripple bed? It's supposed to be for all the patients, only he's always sitting in it, right? Well, I suppose we let Dr. Kropotkin Dr. West. Huh? If you ask me, they have an extra amount of relationship. Uh, thanks, Anna. I'll take care of it. Hello, Doctor. Oh, Dr. West. Mrs. West. Oh, I'm so glad that you got here before Dr. Mink and I. We should talk about his wanting to operate. Oh, no, don't worry. There won't be any surgery here. Excuse me. Well, Lydia, uh, this whole thing shouldn't take more than an hour. Well, let's see. One hour of your time's about six hours standard time. Uh, excuse me. I'll, uh, see you inside. Come on now, be a good girl, and as soon as the meeting's over, we'll go down to the bay and find a special place for dinner. Uh, talk to the patients, they like company. Maybe I should have brought my harp. All right, all right, Anna. Uh, hello, Freddy. Lydia, darling. Oh, so good to see you. Where's Oliver? With Dr. Kropotkin, I think. And left you all alone. Hmm? Ah, Lydia, if you were my wife, I... Freddy. Mm, you wouldn't be out of my sight for a second. I think your meeting is ready to start. Ah, Mencken, this is knife. If Freud knew... See you later, darling. Goodbye, Freddy. What's so fascinating? Nothing. The ripple bath. I was curious. If you want to go first, go right ahead. But don't dawdle. No, thank you. Don't let me disturb you. We 
we've met before, sort of. I know. You're one of them. One of what? Intake vows of maternal tendencies. We can't all live in the world of Apollo. What would you know about Apollo? Oh, some of us intake valves have read a little. Well, this uh, place seems to be agreeing with him. Oh, yes, he is adjusting very well. He's been working very hard on his poem. He's, he's on the third part. Mm. I'll show it to you. There, you know, you this, uh, this might be a great help at the meeting. Oh, no, I... Well, I'll get his permission. Very well. You want I should look for him? Uh, no, uh, I'll find him. You might look in the hydrotherapy room. All right, don't worry. I, I talked to her. Thank you, Doctor. The meeting was ready to start. Uh, yeah, in Dr. Parkinson's office. Aren't you coming? I'll be there in a few minutes, yes. Um, Oliver, I. offer is a cure. Painting, ping pong, and whirlpool baths. How has the patient been responding? He seems to be happy. Happiness is not a psychiatric term. I mean, he is functioning, he is identifying, and he is right. He is actually right. Oliver, we are discussing Mr. Shillito and his accomplishments. Dr. Mankin has proposed surgery. I have insisted. He is not a chimpanzee. He's destructive. I've been doing some investigating. He's responding to treatment, Dr. West, tell him. Yes, tell me. How are you curing his violent spells? Well, I mean, it's, it's really, it's much too early to say. Well, we have been helping him with understanding, with encouragement, and with his environment. Environment? I appeal to you as scientists. I demand a chance to prove I'm right. He is not violent now. Of course not here, in a cocoon. But can he stay here for the rest of his life? But your technique is a form of castration. You will make him a vegetable. You will destroy his passion. Mm. And what about his gift? What gift? His poetry. To hell with his poetry! I want to make him a useful social human being. I think maybe. The poetry is a substitute for sex. Yes, the man's obviously not successful with women. His wife has given her consent. She wants to help him. I insist we take a vote. I vote yes. I vote an emphatic no. I say no. Dr. Vorbeck? No. <clears throat> I'm considering. If I say no, no operation. And if I say yes, then Dr. West has a deciding vote. I think under the circumstances, 
I say, yes. Thank you, Dr. Warbeck. You are another mechanic. Well, you have lost anyway. We all know what Dr. Vest feels. Your methods have failed on this man. Make it official, Oliver. Vote. Oliver, for the well-being of the patient, for his wife, for society, you must vote yes. It's two for, two against. Give them your no vote, Doctor. I say... Yes. I was just asking the guy for a match. Oh, shut up, will you? Some job for grown men. Compared to you, I'm a shining example. It's him! Stop! Pull up! I can't till we get to the other end. Call the other side!
can just drop your hands off. My boy! He took it! My boy! It's mine. Is the arm like told you he'd come back for this? things to do. Oh, Lydia, even in the morning, you, you look so lovely. Freddy, 
Don't be silly, the maid. Ah, it's her day off, and your children are at school, and Oliver is at Para Park. Let go. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's talk a little first. Hmm? I have to get dressed. I'm late for an appointment. <laughs> Suddenly you are afraid of a little talk. It wasn't so long ago you... You were begging me to analyze you. I was just trying to make Oliver jealous. Oh, I understand. An American making love is like an Hungarian playing baseball. <laughs> Any good? Get out of here. No more acting aloof with me. Stop it! Darling. Ready? Darling. Stop it! Stop struggling. I... Stop it! I love you. You're hurting me. Stop struggling. Stop it! Lydia, I... What are you afraid of? We are only two nervous systems reacting to each other. Stop struggling. Lydia, darling, I... Oh! Don't laugh at me. If you don't leave now, I'll, I'll tell Oliver. You wouldn't do that. Oh, wouldn't I? No. No. <laughs> oh. You don't want... He should have Mencken cut me up, too. Huh? Is that why they went to Para Park? I thought you knew. I mean, uh, Lydia, he saw you in the ripple bath. I mean, uh, what went on didn't influence Oliver's decision. Where is he? Who? Dr. West. Dr. West is in the examination room. going to be an operation. Oh, Mrs. West. If I knew you were interested in psychosurgery, I would have invited you. Dr. Menken. Uh -huh. Mr. Shillitoe is coming out of antiseptic. Good. Good. Perhaps the next time. I always find this an intensely moving moment. Science, walking hand in hand with humanity. To have changed a destructive antisocial creature into a responsible citizen. Now, he will be able to make a living, to provide for his loved ones, Take his rightful place in the community. Miss Shillito. Mr. Shillito. Hmm? You feel better? Hmm? You feel more relaxed. Hmm? Hmm? Yes. Yes. Hmm? Give me back my phone! Orderly! Orderly! 
and she believes in my poetry. Well, so do I. You? You said you didn't care about it anymore. She doesn't understand my work. I do, too. Yeah? Yeah, I understand a lot of your stuff. Are you all right? Well, never better. You just got me out of jail. Now I'm gonna finish this damn poem. Please, I have to talk to you. Well, go ahead. Alone. Nothing doing. Keep out of this. Husband. Good. What are you going to do? Join Apollo. Hey, did you hear that, Knocker? The only hope for the world is for everybody to move in with me. What? Don't make fun of me. I'm not. Where's your luggage? Now, wait a minute. She can have the couch. Oh, no. Then you can have the couch. Simpson, there's no room. We're stepping on each other. You're out, out all day. She can help with the cleaning, the I cooking. I don't want anybody to we'll help try with the cleaning. It. What are you talking about? You want to join Apollo. You're out of your mind. And the words of Mercury are harsh after the songs of Apollo. Samson, I want to talk to you. Come on. Hey, Samson. I mean everything. Samson! Samson! I think your portrait's the most important thing in the world, sure. But you know, now with the alimony and everything, I think you ought to get a job. Not until I finish the poem. Well, sure, I know you gotta finish it, but Samson, there's something else I gotta tell ya. Samson! Well, I was afraid to tell you before, but it's been more than four months now. Well, I gotta stop work soon. Oh, 
Samson, say something. Samson, say you ain't mad at me. I'm not mad at you. Come on. Samson, are you sorry? No. Well, show me you're not sorry. Later. No, now. Come on, Samson. Come on, Samson. How long does it take to throw one? <laughs> Oh, I missed. Hey, hold this. Oh, shut up. 